Hi folks, welcome back. I hope you're all doing well. A few weeks ago, I took a look at a paper that takes a very fundamental data structure, index trees, and tries to improve its performance by using machine learning. And today we're looking at a paper which does the same thing for perhaps the most fundamental of algorithms, which is sorting. What a sorting algorithm essentially does is take an original element from an unsorted array and map it to its final position in a sorted array. Now the algorithms that we're familiar with like insertion sort or quick sort do this in a deterministic way but they also do not understand or take advantage of the distribution of the input data. The case that the authors are making in this paper is that if we built an empirical model of the input data, we could use that to predict an element's position in the final sorted array. If we could somehow learn the cumulative distribution function of our input data, which tells us for a given element x, the probability of seeing elements less than x in our input data. We could use that multiplying that probability by the size of the array to get its output position in the sorted array. I'll look at the exact procedure in a minute, but to cut through the chase, does this even work? How does it perform? And indeed it performs pretty well. What the authors are reporting is that they see this learned sorting algorithm perform about 3.4 times better than the sorting algorithm in the C++ standard library. The really surprising thing is that this performance includes the model training time. It even beats out other well-regarded sorting algorithms like TimSort, which is used in Python, and Radix sort. Let's look at a simplistic version of how this would work. Imagine for the moment that we already have learned the CDF of the input data. Now, obviously, this CDF model is not going to be perfect, so it might not give us the exactly correct position of an element in the final sorted array. So what we do is that we allocate an output array, which is slightly over provisioned by this over allocation rate O. So it's slightly larger than the input array. And then we look at each element and map it to its position as predicted by this CDF that we have learned. And if the position in the output array is empty, then we simply put it there. But if it is not, then we have a collision and we need to do something about it. So imagine for the moment that we store it somewhere else if there's a collision. And finally, we then compact this array, taking out all the empty spaces, and then if we have any sorting errors, if the output array is non-monotonic, then we do a quick insertion sort to finally sort the output array. Note that we expect this final insertion sort to be pretty fast because the array is almost sorted in some sense. So what do we do about collisions? This is very similar to the issues we have with hash tables, and there are several well-known techniques to deal with it. One is linear probing, where you just look for the next empty position and put the collision over there. Another one is chaining, where for every filled position, you maintain a list of other elements that also would go to that position. Or we could have a spill bucket, which simply appends all the colliding elements into a separate list outside this main array. But then this requires that once you're done at the end, you sort and merge the elements that went into the spill bucket. And it is the spill bucket option that the authors went with because empirically they saw that it had the best performance. The other big thing that this entire scheme turns on is what we use for our CDF model. It must be very fast to train and also have very low inference time. The authors here use the recursive model index architecture, which consists of layers of simple linear models. 
The simple algorithm we just looked at it doesn't have the best performance and the main reason for that is that it is not very cache friendly. It still does a lot of random writes throughout the output array. So in order to make the algorithm have more cache locality and much better performance because of that cache locality, the final cache optimized learned sort algorithm looks something like this. We break the entire original unsorted array into a fixed number of buckets. And the input elements are put into these buckets based on the prediction from the CDF model. And we do this recursively, breaking those two buckets into smaller buckets until we meet some lower threshold here the authors chose six. So we keep breaking the array into smaller and smaller buckets until we hit sub buckets of size six. All the collisions during this process go into a spill bucket on the side. And now when we hit the bottom of this process, we then unwind the recursion while correcting all the incorrectly sorted elements using insertion sort and then finally we sort and merge the spill bucket back into the final sorted array and we see on both real and synthetic benchmarks that this learned sort algorithm beats out pretty much every other competitive sorting algorithm whether it be radix sort or the sort in the C++ standard library or even TimSort. So overall, this is quite a surprising and interesting result because a really fundamental algorithm like sorting has gotten a non-trivial performance boost by incorporating machine learning. I hope you enjoyed that and I will see you next time. Thank you very much.